One of the, the key challenges in tailoring requirements is it really takes you, it requires a very complete and comprehensive understanding of the, of the source of the requirement and why the requirement was put in place. Um, what we found out as we were building 50808, um, really 50808 and the development of 50808 was very dependent on the visiting vehicle knowledge that had been gained through the station programs, interfaces, and on the ATV program and the HTV program. And through us really understanding kind of how to set up the safety requirements for a visiting vehicle coming into the space station. And um, so there was, a, there was a couple of requirement sets that were out there that we were able to build off of but even then, what it took us um, doing was really sitting down and going through every single requirement with the subject matter experts and eventually with three contractor sets and, and defending why we needed the requirement. Why was the requirement? Why was that value there? Why, what was the intent of that requirement? What was it trying to do? What, because a lot of our requirements are really based on tribal knowledge from 50 years of human spaceflight experience, right? Even when you're looking at industry standards, there's a mistake in every requirement, right? People go, oh, crap. Uh, we, you know what, we really should write down what our factors of safety are, right, on this, because um, if you don't do that, we don't have this consistency, and when you go put this vehicle together, you're not going to have the right factor of safety across the, the, the parts of the structure, right? Or, um, you know, you, we have to make sure that people understand what the habitable environment is for this a particular vehicle as it's tied to volume. What we ended up finding out was the way people had written requirements, for example, they wrote a requirement for the HTV. Well, guess what? That was a habitable requirement, uh, a requirement that was based on that particular volume. And so when people just took this requirement and then put it in into a COTS vehicle where you're not defining exactly what the volume of the vehicle is, if you just go take that, guess what? You're giving people a bad requirement. And so it really took us going and understanding, understanding where did that value come from? Why, how is it tied? Because every requirement ends up, it, there's really typically a relational aspect to the requirement. The other thing that's very important is people our environment, our requirements are typically dependent on a specific environment and a specific mission environment and what, what is the, the, the overall environment that we're protecting from. And so that's the other thing that's very difficult is that you really need to understand the environment that you're operating within and then make sure that that requirement that's applicable to the environment that the future vehicle and the future missions are going to be operating in. And so sometimes when you just go take another visiting vehicle requirement, stick it in, and, and um, you have to be very careful. So I just learned it took us, um, our first book, our first draft of the 50808 took us about three months to put together, but then it took another extensive nine-month period of time to do the basic revision and during that period of time, really what was the most valuable um, experience was really going through this line by line review with each of the providers. And basically they were challenging us on every single requirement, the value in every single requirement. And, and, and um, having somebody that may not understand anything come in and then you, you having to explain it to them, why the requirement is there, um, ended up it ended up being invaluable for us to be able to understand, A, why we had the requirement in place. And, and I can't tell you how many times um, I would have the system manager in, and just with a, a few questions in, they would start having a really difficult time defending why a requirement needed to be that way for this particular application, right? Um, so it, it really takes the NASA folks having this rigor and really understanding the source of the requirement and then really understanding um, um, 
how much they can back off that requirement. That takes a very disciplined and knowledgeable uh, requirement owner to be able to go do that. Um, it We were still learning new things about parts of the requirements over time. Um, over, you know, I, I worked with Alan from 2006 and then managed the CRS vehicles. And I, I don't know how many times I would say, we're not gonna make any more requirement changes. We're not making any more requirement changes, but you would just learn something about a requirement, even you know six, seven years later that you realized, oh, we, th that requirement really drove us to do something that we really didn't, it had an unintended consequence. And so we really need to fix that requirement.